The Cleveland Browns face the Arizona Cardinals Sunday. The Browns are in much need of a win. The Cardinals, a team that has played admirably this year but hasn't won, should be a get-right week for your Cleveland Browns. Crossover Thursday starts now on Locked On Browns. You are Locked On Browns, your daily Cleveland Browns podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. It's Thursday, it's week nine, and that means crossover Thursday here on the Locked On Podcast Network. This time, Alex Clancy, Locked On Cardinals, the one and only Jeff Lloyd from Locked On Browns as we preview Sunday's matchup with a whole lot of damn unknowns. We will break down the biggest storylines, key matchups, path to victory, etc. Um, this is going to be a fun one. This episode of Crossover Thursday is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use code all lowercase locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. It's been a couple years since the Cardinals have played the Cleveland Browns. The Cliff Kingsbury list led Arizona Cardinals went to Cleveland and got a W uh, the last time they played. Um, the trajectory for these teams couldn't be more different. But the unknown for the trajectory of these teams couldn't be more similar through nine weeks. It just looks very differently. Jeff Lloyd at Jeff underscore LJ underscore Lloyd on Twitter at Clancy's Corner for me. Deshaun Watson, obviously the biggest storyline out of this entire game. The biggest storyline since he was traded, got the full guaranteed contract, fresh out of ballers. The Rock had it first, but in real life, it was Pat, it was uh, Deshaun Watson. Talk to me about Deshaun Watson this year. Talk to me about him on Sunday. And what are the alternatives, whether it be P.J. Walker or the rookie out of UCLA? Well, I think from what we got from today, I think we were all a little bit more surprised about how much Deshaun Watson did today. Um, and there was, you know, a lot put out. I and mean, there's not, you know, usually a lot put out from practice. Um, but the ball certainly looked crisper. Like the Indianapolis week was weird. And, it, and I was aggravated by it. I was aggravated because, you know, if you thought it was going to be Deshaun, he didn't practice Wednesday. He practiced a little bit Thursday, practiced Friday, you know, Saturday. Okay, he's going to go. Um, but obviously, he saw right away he wasn't ready to go. One of the biggest questions I have is with Deshaun is, is the issue when the pads go on with this shoulder injury? Because we've gone through these instances of him practicing it today, obviously in practice, no pads. Look good, though. I mean, and the balls, balls look pretty solid and looked kind of like what we expect EW to look like. Um, but as far as the season, look, and everybody's so critical of him all the time he's missed. But his last start for the Cleveland Browns was the best start he's had in his entire career with the Cleveland Browns against the Tennessee Titans. Look good. And even the odd thing about the injury, his last ball that day was a 52-yard touchdown pass to Amari Cooper. So the fact that this injury came up after that just seemed really peculiar, I would say. So there's a lot of negativity. And obviously, you know, with Deshaun and the off-field stuff, there's people who are just never going to root for him a day in his life. And I get it. Um, you know, I, I certainly understand, you know, people and they're, you know, being, you know, just not a fan of this man in general, but look, we got a job to do. We have, you know, we have to cover the team that's in front of us. You don't get to pick the assignment. You're given the assignment. You got to do the best of your ability. Um, so, you know, people, and there's so many are, when are we going to trade the you know, grade? This is one of the worst trades in NFL history. Look, I get it what we're looking at right now, but I mean, you're trying to tell me that we're going to look at a movie, you know, that's going to go two and a half hours and we're at the 35 minute mark. And you're trying to say, well, let's judge the movie now. Well, I mean, we haven't gotten to the entire plot yet. We haven't gotten to the fi final part of the yet. I mean, there's people that are supposed to be in this movie that are in it. So it's been difficult from that standpoint. Like you go to the Pittsburgh Steelers game week two, you know, obviously that's on him. I mean, you got to sense the pass rush. You can't give up a fumble late in the game to get a return for a touchdown. You know, the first play of the game, he throws an interception. You know, those things are on him. Gave up two touchdowns, which cost them that game. The Browns very easily, in a weird way, could be six and one. They really could be, which is crazy. And obviously that's, you know, riling up the fan base. Um, now, as far as Sunday, I personally, in you know my show yesterday, did a segment. I really thought it was time to go back to DTR. And it's not a knock on P.J. Walker. But the point is, if you think DTR is going to be your long-term backup quarterback, you think he's got to be able to be equivalent to what P.J. Walker's done at this point. And, you know, but the Browns, there's a lot invested here. And you don't want to – and they already did this once to DTR. He had to start the Raven game. Didn't find out till 1035 in the morning. You know, making your first NFL start. You find out two and a half hours before. Um, you know, and there's so much going on. So it's like, all right, offensive coordinator, let's go over this again real quick. Blah, blah, blah. And everybody, oh, well, Stefanski kept it simple. What 
what do you expect him to do? You know, throw a rookie out there in his first start against the Baltimore Ravens, and you know, this, that, the, the other thing, and you know they got boat raced, obviously. Um, but PJ Walker will start if it's not Deshaun Watson. Um, I think the Browns are also coming at this with a similar theory as to what they did in the Colts game. They think that if Deshaun can go, they'd like to play him, understanding there may be some rust. There may be, you know, but they have the Ravens right afterwards. They have the Steelers right afterwards. So they'd rather not him just walk back in and have to pay, play, obviously, two conference rivals, two teams, both run odd man fronts, which is one of the Achilles heels for the Cleveland Browns. It always has been. So if they can get him through this first week, you know, and basically hopefully get, you know, and this is now the new Russ, not the old Russ, because there's always talk about the old Russ from all the time that Deshaun Watson missed. But that is the plan. And as much as they put out there of him today, and Jimmy Haslam was at practice today. So I think this is kind of be like a group census because everybody's going to be involved in this decision. But the amount of reps he took today, it seems to me like he would be the guy on Sunday. And, you know, and I did say this again as well last night. The Browns didn't make a move at quarterback yesterday. So in some way, somehow, that tells you that they have to be feeling that Deshaun is getting much, much closer, maybe not to 100%, but maybe north of 90%, which will be a lot more comfortable with him playing. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, Jeff Lloyd locked on, locked on Browns. Alex Nancy locked on Cardinals. You could say, dad joke incoming, it's a tune-up game for Deshaun Watson. It was too easy, <laughs> damn it, Jeffrey, because Clayton Toon most likely will be starting for the Arizona Cardinals. He took first team reps yesterday. Um, just like the multiple different potential storylines for the rest of the season in Cleveland, there are less in Arizona, but with still the same kind of uncertainty. Now with Deshaun Watson, it was injury based. Some people thought it was kind of mental. It was like a mental capacity, like a mental barrier that he had to get over, at least from this side. I know, Jeff, you know a lot more about that than I do, but it's very cut and dry with the Arizona Cardinals. They traded Joshua Dobbs. Clayton Toon, fifth-round pick out of Houston, is going to be starting. For every day of Locked On Cardinals, you know that I thought that Clayton Toon should have started week one. That was before they traded for Joshua Dobbs when Colt McCoy was still on the roster because who cares? The, whoever's starting for the Cardinals ain't going to be the QB1 until when, when Kyler Murray comes back. So this is going to be probably a one-and-done for Clayton Toon. He was inaccurate during the preseason, but he showed the ability to huck it down the field to unlock the vertical portion of this offense. And it'll be interesting to see a Drew Petsing offense going into the lion's den or the dog pound, as it were, where a lot of that defense will know what the Cardinals are running in some capacity, even though, you know, Kevin Stefanski called the plays. Uh, Drew Petsing was close enough in this offense is a Cleveland Browns infused offense. So it's going to look very similar to what they see in practice every day. So that's one thing that I'm somewhat worried about, especially with Clayton Toon and his first his first snaps in an actual NFL game with Miles Garrett and Zedarius Smith on the other side, you know, Denzel Ward. I mean, the Cleveland Browns have, you know, nightmare fuel over there, giving up less than 20 points per game on the defensive side of the ball. So it's going to be interesting. It's going to be P.J. Walker versus Clayton Toon, or it's going to be Deshaun Watson coming back off shoulder injury versus Clayton Toon. This is going to be a litmus test for both teams in very mm -hmm. different ways. Cleveland should have no trouble with the Arizona Cardinals, but Jeff Lloyd of Locked on Browns, I've said that about every single team the Arizona Cardinals have played this year, and every single team the Arizona Cardinals have played have been in one-score games aside from the San Francisco game at halftime. The Cardinals have had leads. The Cardinals have been in contention throughout the majority of the eight weeks. And that's something that is the biggest enigma going on right now. Like this stuff must really be working with a team devoid of talent that is being able to stay in contention with very good NFL teams. So we're going to talk about matchups. Jeff and I could do three hours on this game. Like we already <laughs> talked for half an hour before we hit record. We're like, we should probably record some of this and talk about it. So let's get into key matchups. It's going to be mirroring. We already know it's going to be very similar for both sides, but can the wide receivers for Cleveland take advantage of the Arizona Cardinals secondary? Can the Cardinals keep Miles Garrett out of the backfield like no other team on the planet can? And vice versa for the Browns. We'll discuss it next as we roll on here on a crossover Thursday. Alex Clancy, Jeff Lloyd, Locked on Cardinals, Locked on Browns. This episode of Crossover Thursday is brought to you by DoorDash. So in Arizona, at least, there are a couple places that don't deliver on their own. There are a couple places that I love to eat at. And there are times in the day where I can't leave my place. I work from home for both jobs. I, you know, 
I'm constantly on Twitter, recording, getting content out, and I just need a fairy something or other to show up at my doorstep and give me food. <laughs> and luckily, DoorDash is that entity for me. You like Postino? You like Julio's too? Those are my two of my favorite places here in Phoenix that don't deliver on their own. DoorDash will get you there. Very simple. Half an hour later, 20 minutes later, beep boop, you got food at your doorstep. It's that simple. And with this offer, it makes it even better. Get 50% off up to $10 value when you spend 15 bucks or more on your first order when you download the DoorDash app and enter code LOCK23. Again, get 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend 15 bucks or more on your first order when you download the DoorDash app and enter code LOCK23. Subject to change, terms apply. He is Jeff Lloyd at Jeff underscore LJ underscore Lloyd on Twitter, locked on Browns host. I'm Alex Clancy at Clancy's Corner on Twitter, free and available wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Week nine matchup, four and three Browns, one and seven Arizona Cardinals. Uh, Jeff, really quickly, because this, this is an interesting thing. Most times for teams, it is better to be very good or very bad. And Cleveland has kind of been in the middle, four and three through through seven weeks. They, you know, they've had their bye week already. They blew out Cincinnati week one. Looked not so great down the stretch. And I know it's been a carousel of quarterbacks throughout the year so far. Is this a team that can make a push with the roster as currently constructed, even though they lost Donovan Peoples Jones to a trade before the trade deadline? Well, and you factor in that they lost Nick Chubb, but you know you go into oh, last week. Chubb, yep. obviously, right. But you go into last week, they were second in the NFL in rushing. And look, Nick Chubb was never a guy the Browns had to resign. And analytically, you don't resign running backs according to the analytics. But right. when you point your finger at a player and you say, "I want you to come here to plead at Cleveland Brown," and that is the way you carry yourself. The Browns were at a tough spot. They had to resign Nick Chubb at the time. But now you see what the vision is through the analytic lens. They're still running the ball well, obviously. Pierre Strong, Jerome Ford, Kareem Hunt. You know, are the three of them combined as good as Nick Chubb? Probably not, but that's okay. Yeah. Um, and all of this, this was supposed to be a transition year anyway. They were supposed to be transitioning the team that threw the ball more anyway with Deshaun Watson, the changes in the offense. You know, like you talked about, offenses are going to be similar. It's going to be a case where it's not the X's and the O's. It's most likely going to be the Billies and the Joes who are, you know, basically, you know, executing the X's and O's that are going to make the difference. Right. So for me, though, but the thing, you know, for the Browns, they're just going to have to go at it at the defensive side of the ball, even though they have no idea what's coming. I mean, you, you look at Clayton Toon, and I mean, look, if they want to fire up some preseason tape, you know, they can. Um, but, you know, it's obviously going to be a different version here. They, yes, they do have an idea of what Drew Petzing likes to do. But this is one where you just got to go out and dominate. And, you know, it, there's been weeks where this defense has just been absolutely just knock down, drag them out like a bully in the corner. You took the wrong turn late at night. And guess what? You're getting your wallet taken. You're getting your phone taken. You're losing your money. And you're going to get a, you know, a mud hole stomped in you. But there's also been times where they make a lot of plays behind the backfield against Seattle. Prime example. But meanwhile, you're getting torched for 25 a pop, you know, when you're giving up eight, nine plays for 20 yards. So the the small, you know, the small blow-ups of plays of, you know, either one yard, zero yards, negative one yard, you know, those don't look as great when you're giving up 25-yard plays or a Kenneth Walker run for 45 yards. Granted, Seattle probably a little bit more balanced, a little bit more talented on the offensive side of the ball than Arizona is. But for me, that's the fear factor. But also, you're at home. So Clayton Toom is going to Cleveland. And look, it's not the easiest place to play. And look, there was already snowfall on the ground this morning in Cleveland. So Arizona could be walking in there going, well, I mean, it, you know, this is like late December weather. I mean, and it could be, you know, just November, you know, 4th, 5th, whatever it is. And oh my God, you know, this is, oh, wow, we're, we're in the long sleeves, all of this stuff. So it could be, you know, a factor in that regard. But this is one defensively, it shouldn't matter. It, it shouldn't ma Just go dictate it. Go take it. Um, you know, the only question for them really on the defense side of the ball injury wise is that Darius Smith, um, you know, has a little bit of a neck thing going on. They think he's going to be able to go, which gives the Browns, you know, length at their defensive end position. Their defensive tackle has been great. Their secondary, um, Greg Newsom's a little banged up there as well. So we'll see how that works out. But granted, they had a rookie MJ Stewart. Uh, um, I'm sorry, Cam Mitchell, who should have changed the game with an interception 
last week did drop it. It would have been an easy pick six, and nobody would have ever talked about the third and three play call that you know, everybody disagreed with and bannered about. But for me, that's kind of what I'm worried about. You know, look, I mean, you know, it's not the days where you had Larry Fitzgerald and it was going to be nine for 126 and two touchdowns, and how did you combat everything out? You know, John Connor obviously on IR. Um, you know, there's no way Kyler Murray was going to play this week. I mean, you'd be foolish to put him out there against the defensive line. Um, but for the Browns, it's the unknown and not knowing exactly you know, what this team can do, but which just tells me then it doesn't matter. You know what I'm saying? If you're better across the board on one side of the ball, just do you because it's not going to matter what they do. Right. Yeah. No, it's a good point. I mean, you know, it's with uh, with James Conner on IR does hurt. Um, Amari DeMarcado, un undrafted rookie out of TCU, has been taking the line share. He had 20 carries for 80 yards last week. Um, what the Cardinals have done all year is – I mean, up until lately when Josh Dobbs has turned into a turnover factory, he was in the first week and then he has been in the last couple of weeks and now obviously no longer with the organization. But with the Cardinals – I heard about that. I heard about that because you know, maybe some people said, oh, well, let's trade a pick and bring Josh Dobbs back. And there's just not enough alcohol, That's Alex. But go ahead. I know. No, but the <laughs> thing is, you know, it's interesting. So let me go through – because Joshua Dobbs, there's a lot more intertwining here than, than I originally thought with these two teams as we currently said. So, you know – Matchups is it's always been it's going to be Jalti Froholt and the left guard versus Miles Miles Garrett. That's going to be it. That's going to be it. It's going to be Will Hernandez depending on where he lines up on the line. Paris Johnson Jr. I'm sure will have to chip. I'm sure Paris, I'm sure he's going to line up outside sometimes. Even though Jeff, you mentioned he's been lining up a lot more inside. He kind of does whatever the hell he wants. Let Miles Garrett do whatever the hell he wants. Go, and that's something the Cardinals are going to have to just you know mitigate. I mean, they're, they're if if he's living in the backfield, it doesn't matter who the quarterback is. If it's Kyler Murray, it's Patrick Mahomes. If, if he's living in the backfield, you're not going to win that game. So that's really the main thing. And then also, you know, can can the Cardinals run the ball? That's the matchup. Can they run the ball? Can the best defense for the Arizona Cardinals on Sunday will be keeping the card the Browns offense on the field. And it's close or Browns offense off the field. And it's close because Miles Garrett accounts for three touchdowns a week, it seems like. So it's not necessarily it, it's not necessarily as cut and dry as it normally is. But I do want to ask just quickly, like, what I've seen, I so I did my podcast live on Tuesday after they traded Joshua Dobbs. And he was here for seven weeks. He was here for like nine weeks total or whatever, 11 weeks total, 10 weeks total. And I, like, I was going through and I was like, I need to, thank him like what he did although not pretty they didn't win any games but he played competent well above what people thought he could do in an offense that he was I knew a part of a little bit last year but as the starter he kept this team in games he wasn't great he threw bad balls he threw two of the worst interceptions I've ever seen last week but he played pretty good football for a backup with no no talent on defense, kind of a ragtag offense with injuries and otherwise. He didn't do a terrible job, and he's a good dude, and he ingratiated yep. himself right away to the organization. It's like it could have been a lot damn worse through eight weeks for the Cardinals. Right? Well, the thing – yeah, well, and the thing was is, look – the Browns had him the summer before, and obviously he was the backup quarterback all last year. Once Deshaun came back, that was it. You know, you were keeping Jacoby Brissett around. You released him. Till all of a sudden, he ended up – actually, I think it was Detroit for a hot minute. Then it was Tennessee, where he ended up starting two games. And it, it, the guy had never started in the NFL before. You got to keep in mind, you know. Right. And But this year, they bring him back. And, you know, he and Deshaun have a relationship. Both have the same quarterback coach and Quincy Avery. So it was one of those things where it was, you know, they had a relationship. And it's just somebody else you can go to, you know, when the iPad comes out. Okay, a coach tore you a new one. Look, I'm going to be here. This is what he saw. This is what you missed. That, that, that type of thing. But then you got to the summer. And Dorian Thompson Robinson just went out week after week and played really, really well. And it was like, well, you know, and it's the old Colts thing. You know, we don't, we don't practice eft, but it was, you know, well, and then you guys called and obviously, you know, Petsy with the really, do you want a fifth round pick for Josh Dobbs? And the Browns thinking was, well, we don't care because neither one of these guys are even going to be do what Deshaun Watson can do. So sure. Go ahead. He's all yours. We, we drafted the rookie anyway with this thought process. Uh, you ended up with PJ Walker, and look, there's warts, and there's a lot of ugliness to it. But somehow, some way, this guy did go two and one, had a game-winning drive on the road in Indianapolis. Um, you know, 
beat the San Francisco 49ers. I mean, you get the credit beat, you know, maybe a little, you know, being a little bit, you know, extreme as far as using that word, but I think we're done. You know, I think we're done with the PJ Walker talk. And again, for me, it would have been DTR. They still say it's going to be PJ Walker. I think it's probably going to be Deshaun, but I mean, for Josh Jobs, it's hard not to be happy for the guy, but people are you know, trying to bring it back. And the point is, and even for Jacoby Brissett, well, you guys, they might not even start. So these people were having legit arguments and cursing at me. And I'm like, well, even still, if they come back and say, you know, because you got traded, you're not saying I'll be there tomorrow. Right. I might be there Thursday. And they're not going to start on Sunday. So it would have been PJ Walker anyway. And then hopefully it was Deshaun Watson from there on out. So it's like, and there's such an affinity for mediocre players with the Cleveland fan. And I love it. I do. I, I love it because you, you go, you go to bat for your guys. But it's like, guys, they all suck. PJ Walker's not good. Josh Dobbs is not good. Maybe DTR could be good, but none of them are Deshaun Watson. They all suck. So if we got to play any one of these guys, we're going to start talking draft on Lockdown Browns. You're all going to be pissed, but that'd be the direction of the show. Yeah, for sure. No, it makes sense. And it's just, you know, I didn't realize, you know, how hard it was for Josh Dobbs just to come in and do what he did. It, it wasn't elite level. It wasn't an average level for, for a good portion. Of I was stunned that you started in week one. It was like, he, he's been there long enough that he started. Yeah, I know. It was less than two weeks. It just didn't make any sense. But, you know, this is just a, this is all this is, is one big tryout in 2023 for 2024 for the Cardinals. They're going to play guys. They're going to make guys inactive. They're going to see what guys are like when they get all the snaps. They're going to be like, it's, it's just kind of a controlled chaos for the Cardinals. And Joshua Dobbs was the, was the you know, quintessential dictionary definition of that for the Cardinals this year. Let's move to past a victory next. Um, mine are going to be the same as they always are. Jeff doesn't know what those are, which is fantastic. That's why we do crossover Thursday. Jeff Lloyd locked on Browns. Alex Clancy locked on Cardinals. As we roll on here, this episode of Crossover Thursday is brought to you by Price Picks. I love Price Picks. I always joke, I'm like, can I just say that for a minute? That would be a hell of a live read. But the cool part about Price Picks now, normally you you can win up to 25 times your cheese during the football season. But guess what? basketball's back. So with the basketball season here, you can now pick combo projections across football and basketball from the specials league. So what does that mean? A league created specifically for combo projections that include two or more players from different sports or leagues. What does that mean? Here's an example. LeBron James and Travis Kelsey at a 10.5 combo of three point five three pointers made and receptions. So it's both combined and you can choose more or less than you normally would, you know, as you normally would with prize picks. They have quick and easy deposits, super easy, quick and easy withdrawals. You can use Apple Pay now. They've got you covered for everything. So go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to a hundred bucks. Again, go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to a hundred dollars. Final segment here, week nine crossover Thursday. Oh, I haven't done my disclaimer this week. Appreciate football. Jeff, I've been doing this once a week. Normally people will love football for four weeks, first four weeks, and then the last four weeks. Everything in the middle, people take for granted. Most times we do also. I refuse to do it. I refuse to do it. This, I, I'm pinching myself. We have, we're have we in the middle of the season, man. Half the season's gone. And it's like kickoff for week one was last week. Appreciate football. Anyways. Uh, pass the victory. Um, I'm going to go first here because these are very simple for the Cardinals. And they're also almost insurmountable at most times without Kyler Murray at quarterback. One, get after the quarterback. Any quarterback that's pressured has the proclivity to potentially make more mistakes than if they were having tea parties in the backfield untouched. Obvious, right? The Cardinals pass rush has been a spectrum of awful and non-existent to where the hell is that been? And where the Cardinals can wreak havoc is Nick Rallis just sending blitzers at a higher percentage. You're on the road. There's a good chance the defense of the Browns will hold the Cardinals offense at bay. So the defense is really going to have to find an in to be able to get to whoever starts a quarterback, which in turn will allow the secondary to be more opportunistic and the inferior talent level. The best friend for an inferior cornerback room is a good pass rush. The Cardinals have to do it, and they got to win the turnover battle without turning the ball over themselves. Those are the two big ones for me because the offense 
the, the offense can't afford to turn the ball over. The defense has turned opposing teams over, but case in point, the Rams turned the ball over three times and the Cardinals offense turned that into three total points because the offense is not where it needs to be. The Cardinals can not only, can not only not turn the ball over, but must turn the Cleveland Browns offense over if they want to keep this game close. Well, for the Browns, look, I mean, even if it's going to be Deshaun and, you know, but even still, if it was PJ Walker, this team, as much as this year was supposed to be about the transition to a more of a passing team, their offensive line, it's not there yet as far as transitioning to a team that pass pros more than they run block. This offensive line was assembled to be a good run blocking unit. Um, so, it doesn't matter that it's not Nick Chubb. Jerome Ford, and that was crazy last week because we're talking about a guy that left the facility on Wednesday in a walking boot, but somehow made a flight to yeah. Seattle on Saturday and played, and played significantly in the fourth quarter, so much so that they didn't play Kareem Hunt in the fourth quarter, which they probably should have. Um, but one, play, one thing I've been screaming about was Pierre Strong. This was a move they made over the summer. Um, this move was made while Nick Chubb was still highly involved, obviously well before the injury. He runs a 4-3-5. He's got good size at 6'1", 220. I mean, the, the, it's not your legitimate running back who's built like he is and has the you know speed that he does. He sees cutback lanes, which is a huge, huge part of the Cleveland Browns running game. So I said this all week long last week, and then he goes out to the tune in Seattle of you know 11 touches for 80-plus yards. Hey, what do you know? Every now and then we get one right, right? Um, so this is a guy that just kind of got it push, and it's not a knock on Jerome Ford. And when you got three running backs, which means essentially you don't have any, what do you do? You ride the hot hand. You ride the guy who's looking the best at the time. Granted, Kareem Hunt has scored, um, I believe it's you know, three straight games. He's four, He scored four touchdowns in three straight games. There should be a role for him. Um, but if it is Deshaun, and there will be a transition here. You know, I People bring up no Donovan Peoples-Jones and the fact that the Browns traded him. Look, he had single-digit receptions this year. This is a guy that was um, it was in the 40s in like 830 yards last year. He was nowhere near that pace. It's not a knock on Donovan Peoples-Jones. Elijah Moore came in, more mouths to feed. David Njoku is probably the guy that should be taking targets away from both Moore and maybe Donovan Peoples-Jones. And you still have Amari Cooper, who's playing really, really well, even as he yeah. progresses. He just makes plays. So there was no room for Donovan Peoples-Jones. Plus, they had no room. to. Re they weren't going to resign him anyway. So you put Donovan in a great position. You send him to Detroit. It's where he's from. He's on a tail. He went, you know, he went from third in the AFC North to first in the NFC North. Oh, I mean, I'm not crying for Donovan Peoples Jones. Yeah. And guess what? I'm not catching any passes and I'm going to contract here anyway. So maybe I get a playoff game or two. That's going to at least help my value there. But you've got to start working on just what are the basics of the offense. It's the running back, it's David and Joe, it's Maury Cooper. Elijah Moore gets open a lot. Doesn't matter who the quarterback is. They just can't seem to find him. Defensively, it, it just go after it because you don't want to know it. You can't sit around and say, well, we don't know what they're going to do. So what are you going to do? You're going to let them dictate? You're going to let a rookie come into Cleveland. Couldn't beat out Josh Dobbs in for a start for eight weeks, but he's all of a sudden going to come to Cleveland and he's going to dictate the way this game goes. That would be a joke. And I got a news for you, Jim Schwartz. Jim Schwartz don't work like that. You know, he's telling Clayton Toon, guess what? You're going to see 95, you're going to see 99, you're going to see 94. And let me a name that I absolutely want to say, Maurice Hurst. Maurice Hurst drafted years ago. His draft process went to crap because they thought he had a hard condition. Maurice Hurst is a top five PFF defensive tackle right now. The yeah. Browns signed him for peanuts, no guaranteed money. And this guy is out there bowling. His interception last week, I it's very rare you see a defensive tackle make an interception like that. Mm -hmm. Be the hammer. Be the hammer. Don't be the nail. And the Browns should win this game easily. You can beat Cincinnati at home by 20-plus. You can beat Tennessee at home by 20-plus. There's no reason that this shouldn't be, I don't want to say a laugher, but there's no reason that this shouldn't be an easy one where maybe towards the end of the game you're saying, all right, Deshaun, that's a good day. We're just going to take you out because it's not close anymore. But, you know, if they get close, then that's when the worst things happen to the Browns. When games get late, because they all get in their heads and, you know, you get to a situation. Look, I, I will never disagree with the play call that coached. Would I have run it a million times out of a million? Yes. But there were players open. Or you could have told P.J. Walker, we're calling a pass play. But you know what? I'm calling a running back leak. So as soon as he leaks, get in his can and yeah. follow him wherever he goes. And I don't care if you don't get the first down. You're going to yeah. get to the two-minute warning. We're going to punt it. And they're going to have to go maybe at, 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 at worst 80 yards with two timeouts. But didn't get done, lost another one. Go out there, reclaim what you got, because that makes it five and three. And maybe now you're talking Baltimore, Pittsburgh. And, you know, this is when business picks up again. But then again, for the Browns, right after that, the schedule lightens up a lot. Yeah.
this is going to be fascinating for the Browns and the Cardinals just to kind of see what it's going to be like. I, I said on yesterday's podcast, the Arizona Cardinals season starts in week 10 when Kyler Murray comes back and James Conner's ready to return from IR. If, if he is in fact healthy, he's, uh, you know, he's eligible to return. This is going to be one of those games like Jeff, I've talked to, you know, my everydayers about the cart, like going into every game, except for probably week one, I could be like, this is going to be one where the Cardinals are going to go down 24, nothing. And it's just going to be a laugher as you call it. There hasn't been one of those this mm-hmm. season. And that's a testament to Jonathan Gannon preparation to Drew Petzing, especially with the offense, to Nick Rowles use utilizing the skill set that he does have, even though it's kind of inferior, especially with injuries or otherwise Buda Baker, et cetera. But there hasn't been one where it's like, oh no, this is going to get ugly early. A lot of times the Cardinals score first. So it'll be interesting to see what happens on Sunday. Inclement weather, really tough place to play at the dog pound. First time starter, fifth round pick out of Houston. I mean, Clayton Tune won a whole bunch of games in college. Okay. He was a, I think they lost to Desmond Ritter Cincinnati to get into the playoff. Um, if that, if, you know, he played six years in college, he's hucked it. Okay. But this could be one of those. I don't know if it will be. We will see. Alex Clancy, Jeff Lloyd, crossover Thursday, free and available wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube for Locked On Browns and Locked On Cardinals. We will talk to you on our respective podcast tomorrow.